I'm Francesca, I'm speaking from uh, Montpellier, France, and I will be introducing this uh, shorter session on tools, featuring uh, three papers on different level of processing of parliamentary data. Uh, just a few introductory words on uh, each of them. So the first one is uh, who mentions whom, recognizing political actors uh, in proceedings uh, by uh, authors from the University of, um, uh, of uh, Amsterdam. It relates on the bootstrapping of named entity annotation for Dutch parliamentary proceedings. And the focus is uh, on recognizing specifically persons mentioned by uh, speakers. The authors describe how they created a training corpus based on lists of name and then use it to train an adapted spacey model uh, with uh, promising results. They also uh, have uh, um, some uh, um, uh, tools for visualization of the results, which you can see here uh, in the images uh, below. So the um, second paper, uh, challenges of applying automatic speech recognition for transcribing EU parliamentary committee meetings, a pilot study, is by two authors from the University of Leiden. And uh, it, as the title says, it's uh, focusing on uh, automatic speech recognition because the corpus that the authors are dealing with here is on EU parliamentary committee meetings, which are more challenging but interesting type of data. They are meetings that are held informally, generally in English, but with participants that are non-English speakers, not normally, and they are non-transcribed uh, as a praxis. So the uh, authors, of course, try to apply state-of-the-art uh, ASR for English, and the, then they evaluate the results. Uh, in, so the overall uh, e transcription errors uh, rate is encouraging, but uh, for certain types of words, notably in identities, uh, there, there can be uh, big issues, as uh, uh, one of the examples uh, I cite here uh, show. <laughs> and uh, uh, this, of course, uh, uh, leaves room for improvement uh, uh, using specific resources. The third uh, paper uh, features uh, uh, so parsing Icelandic, the Icelandic Althingi, hopefully, transcripts, uh, parliamentary speeches as a genre. Uh, so it, uh, it's by uh, the team uh, of the Icelandic uh, Institute for Icelandic Studies, uh, which we have already met uh, with the Icelandic Parliamentary Corpus in the previous session. Here, the authors report uh, on the syntactic parsing of uh, um, a selection of uh, transcripts from the Icelandic parliament, or parliament. and uh, the purpose was to enable a more in-depth uh, uh, linguistic analysis of such transcripts, transcripts as a genre. The authors compare uh, also this, uh, the, use these linguistic syntactic features to compare to other genres and uh, highlight uh, uh, specifically the similarities with uh, religious speeches. So we come to my questions, which I will just quickly sum up here. Uh, so generally speaking, my first question was, uh, so they are relating to, to, on, to interoperability also. And the first one is uh, on uh, um, interoperability with, uh, uh, of these tools and levels of analysis with the VTI XML format, which has been cited uh, before and with, towards which uh, various projects are converging. Secondly, and more generally, there is the question of, uh, uh, of enabling cross-corpus, cross-language querying and comparison, which uh, is a typical demand not only for linguists but for, for political scholars. And finally, uh, the issue of standardizing the annotation and referencing uh, of named entities, so specifically people and organizations and also places, by means of uh, using permanent identifiers from the semantic web. So the floor is now uh, to the authors uh, uh, for replies and comments. Okay, thanks very much, Francesca. Uh, so um, I just be very briefly answer your question. So we've used this um, uh, spacey um, software uh, for named entity recognition. This is an... Um, uh, text analysis software and it can be used actually in any language. Um, we have used the uh, named entity recognizer that, that comes with Spacey for Dutch and shown that it, that it was very, very bad. It performed very badly on the Dutch data. So we, we created our own um, training examples and 
and then then it it worked very very well. So um, that 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 is more an answer to to maybe the second second question, uh, whether it can be applied to data in Thai uh, XML. Uh, I, I think very easily. Uh, actually, we got our data in a in a Dutch parliamentary XML in their own um, in their own schema, and um, well, you just apply it to the text. So that is that is easy too. The last question is very interesting. So uh, uh, I have a lot of uh, experience on this, uh, linking the um, the entities to uh, the semantic web, if you like, or uh, to local databases. So I can say something about that. So we, we try to link to Wikipedia. And uh, that works very well for uh, for the current data. So for MPs, it works very well for the ministers too. So for the, the people in the Dutch parliament, it works very well. For the uh, organizations, uh, uh, we did not check that so extensively. For the parties, it works, of course. That's easy. There are so few. Uh, but uh, we are looking also at um, ministries. We, we, in Holland change their name all the time. We are looking at committees. So we have 50 to, to 100 so different co parliamentary committees with very complicated long names. They are not in Wikipedia usually and they change their names all the time. Uh, so this is very, very difficult to link. Um, when you go back uh, in time, then you see that the coverage of Wikipedia is dropping fast for, for uh, at least for the Dutch situation. So I, uh, I don't have the numbers in my head, but I think it's dropping to 10, 20% if you, if you go back 150 years of the MPs. Uh, so that is, that is hard. Uh, so what we did is we to try to link to local databases of the parliament. Um, so, for many parliaments, I think, uh, at least in Europe, you can download uh, some of these local databases. But uh, it's also very difficult because these local databases change all the time. It's unclear uh, um, whether historical data is, is still being available. And uh, at least in Holland, uh, the MPs change uh, very often, so they change their names. They change from party to party, so they can they stay, they remain in parliament, but they they go to another party or they start a new party. So this is uh, is very difficult, and uh, we we tried it because there was a lot of demand, but uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, this is really hard. It it takes it is almost impossible to automate automate this is all i have to say on your questions thanks okay thanks um yeah uh, i don't know who is going to answer whether christian or einar i think they're both online the floor is yours yes, that'll be me hello do you hear me my name is christian uh, so uh, i actually made a tiny addition to the to the slide, but it hasn't appeared, but that's, that's all right. It's just uh, a little bit about a project, which is um, uh, ICEPAC, the Ice, uh, Icelandic Past Historical Corpus. But we have now added uh, Parliament transcripts to that corpus. Um, so as the answer to, our, to the first question, uh, our source for Parliament text is the Icelandic Gigawood Corpus and, and the parliamentary uh, uh, part of that, which uh, Starka just talked about. Uh, so we are uh, indeed working with a TEI format from them on the input side uh, and have scripts uh, uh, working uh, that, that use that. So um, currently we're not using an XML uh, format or TEI format. Uh, but that would be a nice option for users to have, uh, especially if they are looking at uh, multiple different um, uh, types of projects um, <clears throat> and comparing them. But um, you know that that will be considered in the future. 
Um, our current format is uh, designed to be uh, quite human readable as well as machine readable. So that's, uh, you can see an example of it in the, in the graphic that was in the slide uh, before. Um, but um, we, we do consider XML to be impractical for the manual editing. We currently have to do quite a bit of manual editing. Uh, we use a visual uh, editing tool, but, but we must uh, correct the files manually as well. And XML would be quite cumbersome for that purpose. Um, so, um, so that's, that's why we will uh, probably stick to it. Uh, you know, and, and, and the current format is also quite useful for, for users, I think, to look at. You know, it's, it's been used on, on websites and such to display our data to users. <clears throat> Um, so IcePack was, uh, as to interoperability, yes, um, IcePack was based on the Penn Historical Corpora. So there are several, um, several tree banks that use the same, or, or well, not exactly the same, but, but uh, they, they've all had their, their adaptations. We have our own, of course, but they are largely compatible. And there are also, in addition to the Penn tree banks, uh, you know, uh, the English tree banks, there is a Greek one, there's a German one, and there are probably others that we, we uh, don't know about, but uh, not very many, but, uh, but certainly uh, quite a few that are interesting to compare. Uh, all of these, uh, uh, the same uh, corpus search tools can be used for all of these, and uh, linguistic analysis and, and other annotation conventions have been retained where, they, uh, where possible. We, uh, in the project that, uh, in, in the current project that we just uh, finished, there was also uh, a part of it that was uh, converting uh, ice pack to uh, universal dependency format. And uh, that will certainly be very useful for interoperability, which was the very reason uh, why we went into that. And uh, so we, we now have much more interoperability, uh, much more, uh, capacity for comparison than before. So, And as to named entity recognition, we've not really uh, been considering that for ISPAC, but um, it certainly would be, uh, would be nice. It's very useful for parliament transcripts, of course. Um, and there are, there are various different ways of referring to people. I think, for example, um, you know, speech is, is sometimes addressed to someone, which may simply be called uh, after to think mode, which means, you know, the honored uh, member of parliament or something like that, instead of using their name. And so it's, you know, it would be very useful to, to have, you know, IDs on those instances. Uh, and also marking, you know, of course, uh, is this is a proper nouns, you know, things that are being discussed in parliament, but uh, uh, proper nouns as such of proper names uh, have been an issue for us. I mean, there are, especially multi-word proper names. The current, uh, the current procedure, you know, has, uh, has us marking these on the word level, but that's just problematic for words, so, you know, or for, I mean, names that contain uh, you know, prepositional phrases and such. So, um, so if we were to, to, to make that instead be a container for the whole proper name, that would be a, a nice anchor to put, you know, to put an ID, or a named entity in there. So that, that would be uh, perhaps additional motivation to do something like that. Uh, thank you. So the last uh, slide. Uh, who is? Uh, a, a it's Hugh Ho. Hugh, okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, uh, hello. Uh, um, I have to say that, and as you can expect from the title, we are, this research is in quite uh, preliminary stages. Uh, so we did just a pilot and the background is that you have the European Parliament, the plenary meetings, which is very often researched already, yet it's a little too shallow for in-depth research. So we started looking at parliamentary committees because they contain a lot more detail yet they are not transcribed so that's where we try to see whether we can use ASR in order to uh, transcribe those and then they can be used for 
further research and the first results are is that it's uh, feasible. Um, next slide, please. As an answer to the first question, like uh, we didn't really look into it yet, but everything, every next step in our research depends on what quality we can get the ASR to get to. Currently, we're a little bit uh, pessimistic as how far we can go in terms of recognizing names and recognizing entities, but we are thinking of like not uh, recognizing who is uh, uh, mentioned, but maybe to see whether you can recognize an entity based on its context with, for example, uh, BERT uh, framework. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, as an answer to the questions too, like we, again, the, 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 the aims is that uh, we try to make the quality of the research as uh, of the ASR as high as possible. And once the quality is enough, we can do uh, uh, we can apply uh, uh, scripts based by uh, others in order to present uh, it in the formats. And I must say, I have learned a lot in the first session about what's all available and what we could do. And in first instance, the development will be mainly based on the needs of the political science community and less based on uh, the NLP community, but we'll try to see how we can uh, merge that as well as possible so that uh, it can be reused in both uh, communities. Uh, next slide, please. And we have, like, since it's uh, in preliminary stages, we hoped from Parla Klarin uh, to elicit some more feedback, yet Corona has prevented this from happening, but we have like one big question we are having now, like would it, currently we are uh, creating the gold standard by correcting automatic transcriptions. And we do realize that this might uh, cause some fishy uh, situations, yet we, a question we would have liked to have answered is whether uh, this, could be acceptable and in what uh, things we need to consider. Of course, we have thought of it, but this is a question we are uh, having at the moment. And if anyone wishes to share their opinions, I'm on Twitter at Autotos and I have an email address. Uh, thank you. That was it. I feel that my questions were uh, answered uh, uh, and uh, with interesting uh, uh, propositions. I think that, uh, as someone has said, uh, the exchanges that the, I mean, people seeing the works of others have probably given ideas on how to improve on interoperability. Clearly, working with TI, it's, I mean, some tools may allow for TI in input, but then uh, whether you want to produce TI output with the additional annotation layer, that's a different question, and may, it may also vary on. Um, uh, on the types of, of level of level of analysis, maybe the Parla Clarin community could agree upon also a minimal set of um, of elements that uh, the TI uh, Parla Clarin TI should uh, should have, and all the rest could be optional. So, uh, if there are no further comments, I could uh, declare the session closed. <laughs> Thank you.